Okay, let's move on to the types of dimensions, dimension constraints that are available in MicroStation. Types of dimension constraints. There are the just three basic types again: distance, radio, and angle. Angle. Okay. So there's many, many dimension tools available in MicroStation. We have this set here, and we have a whole further set in here uh, under all these tool palettes. But to be honest, only a few types are suitable for using with dimension driven design. Some of them won't work at all and some of them only work some of the time. And it takes a lot of trial and error to get used to knowing which ones do which. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give a very basic core that will work at all times and are very robust and will always do it what, exactly what you expect. And if you stick to these, they can be used for every si situation and you don't need to use any of the other ones. So the first thing I'm going to look at is distance. There are two options I use for distance. There's distance between points if I add in two points here, let's give them a bit of thickness. If I want to use the distance between points, I always use this tool here on that setting and then snap to the two points with tentative as I mentioned before. Now just to show that's working. Just to test if it's working, I should say. Every time you place a dimension, I would advise to test it immediately afterwards. Let's make that a constant. And we can modify those. Okay, so that's working. The second one, and this is my, my preferred method, I, I try to use this as much as I can in every solution and I'll explain exactly why shortly. I will use the first tool on the dimension toolbar and I use this last setting here. You may not see that at the moment if you were dimensioning a circle that may have changed to something else like one of these but as soon as you go onto the line, it'll give you the option of, of, of any of these three. And I always choose the last one here, which is dimension size perpendicular points. So select the element, and select the point, and assign, and then we'll assign a variable. And assign the variable to the dimension. Now as you can see, I have a message here saying dimension targets invalid are not found a problem that will continuously come up if you're using the wrong types of dimensions. Now I'm just going to delete that and simply try again. I don't know exactly what was wrong. Ah, right. This, this should have been a construction first. So I'm just going to lock the angle of that. Now I'll do it again. Make sure I've got that point. And now I should be able to apply that. And there we are, we're testing and proving that it's working. And the reason I say this is my preferred method is because it places the dimension exactly on where you need it, right beside the point and right from the origin of the line. If you use this method that uses extension lines up on this one here, as you manipulate a solution, those extension lines can get thrown around automatically and they can be become literally miles away from where you're designing and it can be very difficult to see what dimensions relate to which parts. Okay, so that's distance. For radial there are 
two two options. I always use this dimension element tool again. And as soon as you click on the element, oh, I better I better constrain that um, circle first. So I'll dimension that construction now. And then we can put in radius one and assign that. So now we have a radius, and that one is always guaranteed to work as long as you use that tool. If you ever need to put in a diameter, you actually have to go searching for this tool. Tools, dimension tools radio and should you need to use diameters um, this one is the one to use dimension diameter Notice if I type in the equal straight away, I don't have to apply a constant. So that's radius and diameter. And last of all, angle. And there really is only the one type of tool that's suitable for this. Let's Show that one here. Where are we? Here we go. And it's this middle one here, angle between lines. The rest of these won't work. Or if they do work, they work intermittently. So the best one to use is angle between lines. Now occasionally you will get this message coming up in microstation. Fixed point constraint required before placing constraint dimensions. And that's fine. Just do as it says. Add a fixed point constraint. So I'm gonna add a point at the intersection of these two lines and fix it. Now we'll add angle between lines dimension. And we can put angle 1 equals 45 and apply that to the dimension. I shouldn't have a directional constraint on this line because if it's already constrained in the direction the angle isn't going to have any effect on it. And let's reevaluate the solution. And there you can see <coughs> excuse me. The angle constraint. It's a bit hyperactive. So with that one we'd be best to type in the parameter directly 60, 65, 72 and so on. Now while it did throw up a message box to me there telling me that I needed to put in a fixed constraint in order for the dimension to be placed, that fixed constraint can now be removed. Once the dimension is placed, the fixed constraint can be removed. And of course you've, you've removed certain degrees of freedom but you haven't broken the design. So that's how we put an angle between two lines.